Hello guys and welcome back to another video of Architects 3D Printing. In this episode, we're gonna study the 8th tab of the Curia Custom Settings menu, that is the Supports tab. If you haven't watched the previous episodes yet, I strongly recommend you to watch them clicking right here in the top right corner or well, in the links in the description. Turning the support settings, you will be able to get impossible overhands such as these ones. And now I'm gonna explain you how to optimize the support settings. But before starting, make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, clicking here in this little architect's 3DP icon. If you do it, you will help us growing and continue creating new content for special viewers like you. As always, we are going to open Cura and insert an STL file to play with the support settings. This time we're gonna insert our test cube that we created in the first episode, but this time we have modified it to make use of the support functionalities. So we'll import it in Cura and as you can see, we have elevated it on top of a column and scaled it with a 30mm side. Then we have added a second cube on top of this one with the original size of 20 by 20 mm The solid view in Cura includes a cool feature that is that it paints in red the parts that the software considers that will need support. And if we look in our model, obviously all the bottom parts of the cubes are going to need support. Furthermore, if we slice it and go to the layers view, and if we go to the layer 119, that is the first layer of the bottom cube, and we run the simulation, we can see what is going to happen. It will start printing the infill of the column, and right next to it, the nozzle will start printing the external perimeter of the cube. And as it will be printing in the air, it's going to fall and our print will fail. The solution for this problem is called support, and it is a basic structure printed underneath the parts that can't be printed in the air, as in this case. And if we activate the option Generate Support in the Support menu and we slice it again, we'll see that now it will add these blue parts underneath the cubes that will hold them in place to be printed. But as always, it's not that simple. Since it has a lot of sub-options, if we click into the Setup wheel and go to the Settings Visibility menu. The first option is Generate Support and is the one that was shown by before. Next we find support extruder and all its sub-options that we are not going to activate because they are only useful if you have a printer with more than one extruder, what is not our case. Next we have support placement, a cool option that we are going to show and I'm going to quickly explain you what does it allow to control. It has two possible options and I'm gonna use the layer view to show you the difference. The options are everywhere and touching the build plate. In this particular print, we will need the support everywhere, because if not, the top cube will fall down and the print will fail. But in some prints, we won't want supports in places that are not directly above the build plate. So we are going to let this option visible and set by default to everywhere. And we are going to continue with the next options. Support overhang angle is the next option we find, and this particular option is going to vary depending on the printer and the cooling solution you have as well as the orientation of the model you are going to print. For that, I would recommend you to do this triple overhang test in all your 3D printers. I'm going to do it and then I will be able to continue with the video. It is very important that you make this print with the General Supports option disabled. You can download the STL files to print it for yourself, navigate into our files repository at architects3db.com slash files or well in the links in the description. Our 3D printers have their layer coolers blowing in the direction of the positive y-axis and this triple test is especially useful to test the overhangs in the optimal direction that would be this piece, in the worst direction that would be this one and in the y-axis that is kind of an intermediate point. Once the printers have finished we can now check at what angle the plastic started to fall down in each direction and we're gonna write them down. For the support overhang angle values for each machine, we are gonna set the angle we got out of the worst direction on the side of security. But if you have the possibility to orient the object you are going to print in the optimal direction, you can always increase this number to the results you got in your print. In the case of our CTC Prusa i3, with the Noctua fans, we can see that it started to reduce the quality at 60 degrees in all the pieces. So we will introduce a slightly lower value such as 55 degrees. With our new machine, the overhang started to reduce the quality at 60 degrees in the wide direction overhangs, getting an absolutely perfect result even at 70 degrees in the optimal position and starting to reduce the quality a little bit at 70 degrees in the worst direction. So one more time, on the side of security, we will set the value to 55 degrees. Next in the settings visibility menu, we find support pattern. And as we saw in the infill tab episode, we have some to choose from and we are not going to analyze all of them. 
but by default zigzag is the one that is activated and it used to work pretty well and it's fast but there is one that I like even more and as you may imagine is the grid pattern okay so continuing in the settings visibility menu we will find connect support lines it will reduce the risks of having under extrusion by connecting the lines of the support costing a bit more material since using the grid pattern this should not be an issue I'm gonna hide it and continue with connect support zigzag option that we are simply going to skip since we refuse to the zigzag support and next we will find another very useful option that is support density we are going to show it and as you can see by default it is set to 15 a good value that we are not going to change by now but you can play with it and increase or decrease it according to your needs in every case it also has the sub option to control it with millimeters instead of percentages as we saw in the infill episode but we are not going to activate it and next we'll find support z distance with two sub options top and bottom distance here you can see a graphic explanation of the options so the top distance will be the distance in between the top of the support and the bottom layer of the final object if we go to the layer 117 we can see that this layer is the last one printed with the support next it will print nothing and the next will be the final cube so it creates this 0.1 mm gap in between them what will make them easier to separate after the print we'll find the same concept in the next options that we are going to activate that are support xy distance support distance priority and minimum support xy distance to tune these settings we are going to import another stl file that you can download from architects3db.com slash files or clicking in the link in the description and this is the support deeper test we'll print it with our printers with the settings that are set by default and we are going to see how it comes out and if we need to change any value for the video i'm gonna work with the ctc prusa i3 and the object that came out of the printer is this one now we are going to remove the supports starting with the bottom support in the straight part we can see that it came out quite okay in the top part, but it was stuck to the actual base of the model. If we go to the supports in between the straight parts, we can take it out pretty easy, but being a bit hard as well. Anyways, the top and bottom surfaces of the final object are looking really great. We're going to make another test, increasing a little bit the distances in the top and bottom supports. By the way, the X and Y distances for the supports that were set to 0.7 worked out absolutely amazing and we're going to let this value at 0.7 millimeters so now we are going to increase these values to 0.2 in the top and bottom distances and print it again to see the results this time the result was a bit better but still a little bit difficult to remove so we're going to increase the top and bottom distance to 0.3 and make one more test to see if we can get a good result being easier to remove the supports from the final piece all right so we have printed it out in our two machines and I think we found the perfect number for this value. As you can see, the support of the straight side came out very, very easy, generating just a perfect top and bottom surfaces in our final piece. In the wavy side, it was a little bit more tricky due to the geometry, but was not difficult at all, and the result was very good as well. So we're gonna set these values to 0.3 mm for the top and bottom distances and 0.7 for the X and Y. Now we're gonna continue analyzing two options available to show in the settings visibility menu. So next we'll have support stair step high and step maximum width that I recommend you to let as default and right underneath we have support joint distance. It's set to 2 mm by default. It is very useful and I'm gonna show you why in the bottom surface of the cube. If we set it to zero and you look at this small support next to the main body, you will see that it is separated from it, making this small tower very unstable. But if we set it at 2 mm and slice it again, we can see how now it's a part of the main body, giving to it much more stability, so we're gonna set it to 2 and hide it from the menu since we are not going to change it again. We're also not going to change the next value, support horizontal expansion, that by default is set to 0.2 and it works just okay. The next option is support infill layer thickness. We're not going to change it either. But what it basically does is to modify the layer thickness of the infill of the supports. And if for example we set it to 0.3, if we move the viewer layer by layer, we can see that the infill will be printed every two layers. Now we're going to set it to 0.2 and we're going to hide it from our custom settings menu. Next we find gradual support infill steps. And as we saw in the gradual infill in the infill tab, it will use a defined number of different infill percentages from the less in the bottom to the more in the top. In this case, 15% in the top of the infill. For example, if we set it to 3, we can see how the bottom is completely hollow 
and as it is going higher, it's being more dense till it reaches this 15%. I'm going to try it and I'm going to increase the infill density to 25%, since we'll be actually using less material and the printing time will be reduced from 43 minutes to just 38. And theoretically at the top, that is where we really need the support, we will have more density that will be better for our final object. I'm gonna print the overhand test with these settings to see the result we got out of the printer. The print has just finished and we are going to take out the supports to see the result. As you can see, it's coming out as easy as before and the result of the final piece is also great. So we are going to let this setting activate it and the infill at 25%. The next option in the settings visibility menu is the gradual support infill step high that we are not going to modify and next we find enable support interface with a lot of sub options. An interface will be a solid layer or a group of solid layers that will appear in the top and in the bottom of the supports, creating a solid surface where the final object will rest. It uses quite a lot of material and I personally don't like to use it and that's why I'm gonna skip this group of settings. Anyways you can play with them to check if you like them or not. And right below this big group of options, we will find Use Towers, Tower Diameter, Minimum Diameter, and Tower Roof Angle. I'm gonna show these options and quickly try to explain you what they do using one more time our modified test cube. By default, they are activated, but if we disable them and slice the model, we can see that the supports are directly underneath the main cubes. Instead, if we activate them and slice the model again, we will see some towers appearing around the cube. For example, if we go to the X, we can see that it has created a tower to support the small support inside the X. If we disable it, we can see that now there is only a small tower inside the X and the same happens with the Y. I personally don't see any practical use of this feature for this particular model and that's why I'm going to disable it, but I'm not going to hide it since it can be very useful in some more complex models. And last but not least, we find drop-down support mesh. A cool option that is incompatible right now, but we will see when we analyze the special modes tab. Ok, so once we have optimized all the settings of this tab perfectly, we are going to print these floating test cubes to see the result we got out of our two 3D printers. You can see the result is just great, and the supports came out quite easy, getting very good looking surfaces in the top and bottom layers what is a complete success. So here we're going to finish the 8th episode. Now what I recommend you is to start playing with the options we analyzed today with your 3D printer. And if you enjoyed and learned with the video, please hit the like button, share the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel clicking right here in this little icon that they will find in the bottom right corner. To stay tuned with progress updates and future videos, you can follow us on social networks at Architects3DP. Finally, if you want to support the channel, you can consider to support us on Patreon. From only $1 per month, what will make us extremely happy and will also give you nice rewards that you can check in our Patreon page, navigating to patreon.com slash architects3dp or clicking in the link in the description. Ok, so as always, see you guys in the next video.